Hey everyone, Matt here from Tyke to show you how to quickly get started with Tyke on AWS. So today we are going to set up a very, very simple instance of Tyke using the Tyke Pro Docker image. And with that, everything is going to be on one virtual machine and you'll be able to start playing around with some of the, the neat features that Tyke has. So once you're in the AWS management console, the first thing that you're gonna do is come over to launch a virtual machine. Once that comes up, you're going to pick the Amazon Linux 2 AMI here, and I will do select. For my purposes, I'm gonna use the T2 Micro. You can use whatever you'd like, but we'll use the T2 Micro for this just because it's free tier eligible and we'll click Next, Configure Instance Details. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip right over to Configure Security Group because all of these defaults are okay for us at the current time. Now I'm gonna call this POC Access and we can wipe this and we'll just do POC-Access. And then we'll come down here and instead of SSH, what we are going to do is come into all traffic. And normally, you know, you'd lock this down a little more, but for our purposes, we are just gonna leave it wide open. So all traffic's gonna be able to access this box. I'm gonna do review and launch. We're good here, good here, and good here. So click launch. Now the next thing is you can ex use an existing key pair for access, but I'm going to show you how to generate a new one quickly. So create new key pair is what we're going to select. I'm going to call this POC access. And then what I'm going to do is download the key pair. Oh, I already have one that exists as that. Okay. Uh, we'll call it POC access two, and do download key pair. All right. And from that, I'm going to save it in my type directory and POC access to is the one that I'm gonna go with. So we'll save that. Now it's important to remember that you have to download this file and you need to make sure that you keep this file if you wanna be able to access this instance. So you're not gonna be able to download it again later once it's created. Now that I've got it downloaded, let's do launch instances. And away we go here. So. We've got the instance now, which is launched. And what we will do is click View Instances. Now you'll see this one that I just created is right here. And it is running. The key name is POC Access 2. So now our next step is to actually log into this box. And for that, what we're going to do is bring up a console, which I already have up here. And we'll do ssh-i and now I need to give it my credentials for this so I'm gonna come over to my finder which you won't be able to see but I'm gonna actually navigate to where I stored my key and you can do the same and then what you can do is depending on what platform you're on with Mac you're gonna be able to just if you copy it and paste it you'll see that it's going to give you basically what you're looking for is to get the path to it if you're not already in that directory with your terminal. So we've got that there now. And then what I want to do is we need to then give the address for it, like the, the login. So we'll do EC2 dash user at, and then we need to grab our public IP, which is going to be this one here. So I'm going to grab that, come back to this. Oh, I didn't didn't grab for me there. Back. Right click. Actually, we can just go like this. Command C or Control C if you're on Windows. Right click, paste. There we go. And then what I should be able to do is press Enter and it's going to try to get in. Um, it's going to ask for this fingerprint the first time. We know that it's valid, so we're going to type in yes. Now, this is what you'll normally get if you're storing this in a, a public directory. You're going to get unprotected private key file. And there's a really quick way for us to fix this um, that's going to get around this for us. 
So what we're going to do is we are actually going to change the permissions on that file. So what I'll do is I'll do sudo chmod 600 and then I'm going to switch to that path that my file, my, my access file is on, my key file. So I'm going to paste that there. And then I'm going to press enter to run that. And then I'll have to enter my password. That's your Windows password or your Mac password. And there we go. So now we've, we've changed the permissions on that file. Now let's try and run this again. So now let's try and SSH in with this and we should get this to work. There we go. So now we are officially logged into that box. So now we're at the point where we can start to install some of the required components. The first thing that we're going to do, and I'm just going to copy and paste these commands. If you want to check out the, the guide, the commands are all in there. You can copy and paste them just as easily. So the first one we're going to do is sudo yum update dash y. Then what we're going to do is, and that's just going to update everything uh, that we need. It's going to do some security updates and that kind of stuff for us. Then what we're going to do is we're going to install git using yum. So sudo yum install git dash y. We'll run that. All right, now we've got that installed. Now our next step is to install Docker. So then we'll run sudo yum install dash y docker. And that will install for us. All right, now we have Docker installed. Next thing we're going to do is actually start Docker here. So sudo service docker start, enter. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the user mod command. And you'll see that we're setting a EC2 user. So that is done. Now what we're going to do is run sudo space su or sudo su. Oh, I ran that twice. One sec. Let me copy and paste that. There we go. All right, now we're root. Now what we're going to do is we are going to grab Docker Compose. So there we are. Perfect. We've got that now. And we'll do a quick chmod on that Docker Compose that we just pulled down. Next, what we're going to do is create a symlink for our Docker Compose. Then, after all the above is set up, we're going to actually clone the Tyke Pro Docker repo from, from GitHub. And we'll use, do that using this command here. So git clone, and you'll see that it points to github.com slash tyke technologies slash tyke pro docker demo. All right. So enter, it's going to pull that down. Awesome. At this point, we've got our source. Now we're going to change into that directory. CD tyke pro docker demo. Now we're in that directory. Now what we need to do is we do need to set up some of our stuff in our tykeanalytics.conf. And the thing that we need to put in is actually our license key. So to do that, I'm actually going to use Nano and just do a, a quick update to it. If I open this up, it's going to bring me into Nano. And you'll see down here that I have license key. Now I'm going to quickly grab my license key here. And if you don't have a license key, you can talk to an account manager and they'd be happy to set you up with a trial license. But I'm going to paste this in. So I've pasted it in there now. Our next step is to do control X. And it says save modified buffer. We want to say yes. 
because we want it to save. File name to write, we want to write it to the same file that we're working on right now, so we're going to overwrite that. So that's comps slash tyke underscore analytics dot comp. And there we go. Now we've added in our license key. Now our next step here is to actually bring this stack up. So we're going to do that using docker-compose up-d, just like this here. And we'll let this run. And what we should see at the end of this is, the, is that all of our required Tyke services to get our base installation running are up and ready to be used. This should move pretty quick for you, but it may take a couple minutes. All right, so what we see here is the Mongo Redis gateway dashboard and pump components that we need up are in fact up and running. And you can see that here with done, 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 done. Now what we're gonna do is let's actually log into the dashboard. So to do that, what we need to do is grab our public IP again, come over here, paste it, and we'll do hit port 3000, which is the port that the dashboard runs on. And we'll do HTTP colon slash slash. And you're gonna see that you come to this screen for the dashboard setup. So organization name, I'll call it Tyke. Organization slug, we can do Tyke again. Email, matt at tyke.io. And we have first name, which is Matt, last name Tanner, password for this, we're just gonna use test123, and I'll use test123 here again, and then we'll bootstrap. So at this point, Tyke is up and running. We do have a working instance of Tyke. But let's do some, let's just quickly set up an endpoint just so you can see how it works, and it gives you a good starting point. First thing we'll do is come over here to APIs, click there, do add new API. We'll call this test API. And then our next thing that we'll do, our target URL, we can use HTTP bin.org. That's kind of the default for us. So let's use that. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to switch this to an open keyless. So that means that they won't have to have an authentication token or any type of login. It's just gonna be completely wide open. Just like that, then we push save. Now you see that we have our first endpoint set up here and the target is HTTP bin.org. And now that we have our endpoint created, let's do a quick test in Postman. So what I've done here is I've grabbed my public IP of my server that I'm running on AWS, I'm gonna be hitting port 8080 because that's the port that the gateway itself is actually running on. And it's gonna be slash test dash API slash. And when I do send, I can now see that it is in fact hitting that HTTP bin.org get endpoint. And there we have it. We've created a Amazon EC2 Linux box, put Tyke onto that, bootstrap Tyke, and created our first endpoint. So at this point, now you can start to dig into Tyke's documentation and start to explore all the great features that Tyke has to offer.